Hello, Blake Rudis here with EverydayHDR.com and HDRInsider.com. And today I want to talk about Topaz Denoise because they did this uh, renovation with it and the interface uh, pretty much got a makeover. It looks pretty good, uh, but it's still a useful piece of software that is much better than a lot of noise reduction uh, efforts that you have out there. I mean, there's Photoshop, which is, it does a good job of reducing noise and camera raw and Lightroom, but they don't have quite as many, uh, unique attributes that something like Topaz Denoise has, uh, with its ability to clean up noise on a very, uh, micro scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my background here and just like I do before I do any edits, whether it's with Topaz products or not, I'm going to press Command or Control J to duplicate my background so that I'm not destroying anything on my original background layer. Then I'm going to go to Filter, Topaz Labs, and Topaz Denoise 5. So if you're not familiar with Topaz products, typically all, your, all of your presets are going to be on the left-hand side here. And then on the right-hand side, you have the actual adjustments that go along with it. So I'm going to start off with something like uh, JPEG Strongest because it, it gives me a good starting point. Um, and with this photograph, it looks like it does need quite a bit of strong uh, noise reduction. So let me go ahead and click on JPEG Strongest. And it does quite a bit of blurring to the details here. So we can polish this up a little bit. Another thing that I'm noticing here is with the reds on top of the lights on top of the buildings, those are being washed out quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection here that gives me a good vantage point over my sky, my city, and my water. Because those are my three different areas that I want to see what my noise reduction efforts are going to do. So I'm going to leave the overall strength alone for now. Um, I always start with that at its uh, wherever the preset allows and then I work my way down and then back up to the overall strength. So now what I'm going to do is look at the shadow noise. Um, if you hover over any one of these options here, it's going to tell you what that slider does. So if you're ever confused about what that's going to do, just go ahead and uh, hover over real quick and it'll tell you. So adjust shadow noise. I'm going to go ahead and bring that down because it looks like the tops of the buildings where that shadow noise exists are being rounded on those corner edges. So I'm going to bring down the shadow noise quite a bit to bring some of that rounded area back there. Uh, the highlights, I'm also going to bring that down. These are going to be in the clouds a little bit to reduce some of that blur that's happening in those clouds. And then the reds. So when I when you reduce the red amount by that much, it's actually taking the red out of that area in those color noise areas. So it, it thought that those light areas, those little blips of light on top of the buildings were noise when I bring it up that high. So I'm going to bring that down pretty low to bring back some of the red that was in the lights on top of the bridge and on top of the, the uh, buildings here. Adjusting the blue, it looks like the blue's okay. A lot of the blue's gonna exist down here. If you see where the blue noise is, it'll tell you. You can click on the uh, preview mode and see just where all of your blue noise would be if in the original photo. So it's pretty much gonna be in the uh, the water areas here. So if I bring this down a little bit, you'll notice that it's gonna blur a little bit less in those blue areas. So that's that's about right. I'll leave it just about right there. And now I'm gonna go back to RGB. My old camera did not like um, long exposures or high ISOs, and that's why I had so much noise in this photo. I'm not going to clean up the color because it looks pretty good. If you need to clean up the color, you can go ahead and do so here. This will reduce some of that residual noise uh, clumps that you get there from uh, adjusting these color sliders here. And the correct black level will attempt to put the uh, blacks at their truest black. I'm not going to worry about that too much either. Now, in this detail recovery, it's really important that you um, pay attention to what happens with that detail recovery because you can be doing more harm than good. So yeah, you might want to bring in some of the detail that might have been in the city here, but when you do that, you start to create um, some uh, almost like mesh pattern, unsharp mask mesh patterns that's happening in the sky. So I'm going to bring that re recovery detail down a little bit, and instead of bringing up the recovery detail, I'm going to reduce the blur that's happening with that adjustment so I can bring back some of the detail in this city. So if I reduce the blur by bringing that up pretty high, you're going to see that now the cityscape has that um, sharp uh, uh, polish on the lights that are being uh, given off there instead of the blur that you're seeing at something like uh, 0.14. So I'm going to bring that up quite a bit.
I don't want to add any grain because that's going to bring me right back to where I started with all of this by kind of adding noise a little bit. Now, if you wanted uh, to get a that less blurred feel of noise reduction, you can go ahead and add grain to it because it's not going to add color grain. It's going to add a monochrome type of grain to make it appear like detail um, that has been kind of brought back after reducing that noise a little bit. So it's good. This is my original image and this is the noise reduction efforts afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK on that. I really do miss San Francisco. You can definitely tell that skyline by that uh, Transamerica building right there. So why I do things on a separate layer, regardless of whether I'm using a Topaz product or my own edits, is because if I did something that uh, was permanent, like that noise reduction, uh, if I wanted to go back and edit it, I could by masking it out. So if I didn't like what was happening with the water here, because it looks a little too blurred, I can click on the layer, add a mask, and then just paint in with blue, or with black, sorry, to bring back some of that uh, detail that actually was in the water. And if it's bringing it back too fast, too quick, I can always go into the properties of that mask and decrease the density of it so that it's not so powerful and still gives me some of the detail in those waves that I see in the water there. So again, my name is Blake Rudis. This is Topaz Denoise with the new overhauled look. And you can see more tutorials like this on everydayhdr.com and full-length tutorials on hdrinsider.com.